Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today, we will introduce some new attacks in Bluetooth-based proximity authentication used in Android and Windows. My name is Jumbam Shin from Samsung Research, and this is a joint work with Youngman Jung here and Youngjin Zhang in Oregon State University. I mentioned that this work is not the, it does not show the beauty of Samsung Electronics and Oregon State University. The presentation will be given as follows. I cover the first two things, and then Youngman will introduce technical details about our attacks and our mitigations. Finally, I will conclude. All right. Firstly, I will introduce a very basics about Bluetooth-based proximity authentications. As you know, there are several kinds of authenticators, something you know, something like such as password, pin patterns, something you are, fingerprint, face, iris, and something you have, key, smart card, and token. I think that Bluetooth-based proximity authentication can be kind of a new authenticators, and it can authenticate a device or user using the proximity of your trusted devices. The idea of proximity-based authentication is very simple. The goal is to authenticate the user and just authenticate automatically a user when a, when a device knows that a user is very close. And also, the authenticator user when a user is far away. This huge one example used in Android, using trusted device. In Android smart law, the smartphone is, will be automatically unlocked, the phone, without any kind of user authentication when a registered Bluetooth device is connected. Yeah, so because of that, we can, a user, it improves the user convenience because you don't need to put the pin code or scan our biometrics every time when we use our phones. So, Bluetooth-based proximity authentication can be considered as um, some kind of extension of something you have because a user will be represented by some devices, wearables, user always have. And here, authentication can be done by using the securely paired Bluetooth device. So, because of the secure pairing, we can assume that both devices can share some secret keys, so we can do some mutual authentication using the keys. Also, we need some proximity check, so, we, so a device can measure the signal strength of the established Bluetooth connections. And we can find out two huge cases in real-world applications. The first one is to unlock a device. This is the one used in Android. And the other one is to lock a device, which is used on in Windows. In next slides, I will show the details of what are Windows Smart Lock and what are Android Smart Lock and Windows Dynamic Lock. Android Smart Lock was introduced in 2014 by Google, and you can use it from Android 5.0 Lollipop. Um, the purpose of Android Smart Lock is to provide some convenient main screen unlock feature using, without user authentication, so Android Smart Lock provide several features such as using smart trusted devices, location, and on by detection. In our presentation, we only consider the trusted device. And as I mentioned before, Android Smart Lock skips user authentication if any pre-registered trusted device is connected via Bluetooth. So how can we use the Android Smart Lock? First, a user can assign several kinds of Bluetooth devices. Here, if you use the connection between watch, keyboard, 
and has that, we can assume that a user is very close to our device because user will bring these devices. In other case, if, um, if, we if we assume the connection with the car audio in our car, then we can assume that, okay, user is in a private space, so we don't need any kind of user authentication. So, so it looks like that because users are very close or users are in a private space, we can skip the user authentication without sacrifice, without sacrificing any security. So by the Android Smart Law, the goal is to replace user authentications. Now, let's look at Windows Dynamic Lab. As I mentioned before, the goal is different. It is, the goal is to automatically, automatically run your screen when you are absent. For example, there are some reasons because of some emergency call or something. And Windows Dynamic Lab was introduced in 2017 by Microsoft from Windows 10. And and in, in Windows Dynamic Lab, they provide some additional proximity checking features compared to the Android Smart Lab because it measured, it utilized the RSSI signal. It's a signal, strength of Wi-Fi signals, so that we can measure a more, the, the distance between our laptops and our smartphones more accurately. So how can you use this? When we pair a phone to our laptops, and then, but if our, lap, if our phone it becomes far, then our laptop can automatically detect the distance, and it will lock the phone dynamically. And in, maybe in our live demo, you will see how it works. So the goal of Windows Dynamic Lock is to provide an additional security layer to the lock screen because in Windows, we, all, we already have some, some legacy time-based screen locks. Now, let's think about Bluetooth-based proximity authentication. This is a security conference, so what we have in mind is a security. So for the proximity-based authentication, we have to think about the two things. The first one is how secure is the authentication and how secure is the proximity checking. Um, as shown in our title, Bluetooth-based proximity authentication will use the block Bluetooth, so, and Bluetooth also provides several kinds of security mechanisms. So, we can, so can you say that it is secure? So can you say that, can you use Bluetooth for secure communications? The answer is yes. A lot of stuff has been done there. And NIST also provided some report in 2017 that Bluetooth provides enough security when it is used properly. But what about its use for the proximity-based authentications? Can you get the same answer? No. Actually, in 2015, two attacks on Android Smart Lock was proposed. I will explain the reason later. But actually, the problem was fixed by Google, fortunately, in 2015. From, so the problem can be thought as fixed from Android 5.1. But can you say that Android Smart Lab is secure after the fix? For Windows Dynamic Lab, to the best of our knowledge, there is no result about its weakness. So does it mean that the Windows Dynamic Lab is secure? Of course, the answer is no. And that's why I am here. We will show several kinds of new attacks for Android and Windows. 
I believe the root cause of the problem was not because of the security of Bluetooth. It is because the Bluetooth-based plasma authentication does not utilize the Bluetooth security properly. So I will introduce the basic concept of Bluetooth security, and I will also introduce the, I will introduce our analysis result about the proximity authentication. Uh, let's look at what happens when we buy a new Bluetooth device. Let's assume that you bought a Bluetooth keyboard for better typing for your smartphone. The first thing you need to do is to pair your key, new keyboard to your smartphone, and then the when, and then secure pairing mechanism works and a link key is generated. After that, every time we, we, our, we connect our Bluetooth keyboard to our smartphone, the first, firstly authentication happens using the link key, and then every message in the Bluetooth are encrypted. So what about its security? Can you say that it is secure against the man in the middle attacks? The answer is, yeah, yes. Bluetooth provides some kind of enough security when it is properly used. It is not my opinion. It is the opinion from NIST. Now. Let's look at the architecture of Bluetooth. Yeah, the diagram looks complex, but you don't need to understand that. You, just, you can just imagine that the controller means the hardware of Bluetooth dongle, host is a Bluetooth driver, and HCI is the interface between them. And our Bluetooth-based processing authentication called this layer of protocols. And, but, and this report says that every kind of protocols, including radio frequency communication, TCS, and all others, are secure, but SDP, used for service discovery, is not secure. There is no security here. And except that, everyone is secure. So, it means that SDP, should not be used for any for the security purpose. It's obvious. Now let's look at the granularity of Bluetooth proximity measures. Um, theoretically, yeah, this is from the Google's report, Google's page, and they, when they introduce the smart law, they say that okay, you have to use the smart, smart lab using trust device with care because it can work up to 100 meters. It means that when two devices are far away, about one meter, 100 meters, it can work. So yeah, that can be a problem. So in Windows Dynamic Lab, they want to solve the problem using the, by utilizing the RSI signal strength. And the basic feature of RSSI is that the signal strength becomes lower when distance become to be. So we can use these features for, the, for measuring the distance. Now, let's look back to our initial question. So how can we make a good authentication and good proximity checking using the features provided by Bluetooth? As shown here, some messages are exchanged, yeah, sure. And each device can get some information, such as MAC address, class of device, and device names, from the, from, and also the signal strength from the messages. The problem is how to do an authentication, how to do a proxy check using these values. More specifically, this slide shows the Bluetooth properties used in Android Smart Lock and Windows Dynamic Lock. Maybe that's 
all of the properties used in such authentications. Yeah, now, let's look at the security of them one by one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the first one is MAC address. Yeah, obviously, MAC address is not secure. It can be easily spoofed. And it was already applied to the first attacks on Android Smart Lab. And we can easily do the attack by, do, by using this command. What about the class of device? This information is used in the Windows Dynamic Lab. So because Windows, Windows Dynamic Lab allows only the phone for the dynamic, for the authentications. But this value is sent by SDP. And SDP, there is no security in SDP. So you should not use the class of device for the security purpose. What about the RSI signal strength? Here, we have to think about how it is implemented in Android and Windows. The RSI, the RSSI value means that it sets the signal strength of the most recent packet received from a given MAC address. So if it is easy to spoof a MAC address, then an attacker obviously can change the values. So it should be carefully used. Uh, now let's look at a more complex one, and it's for the last four. And this diagram shows some state when the Bluetooth connection happens. And yeah, we don't need to think about that. Here, the link is doubling means, means the, the first physically connection, physical connection. And then in Bluetooth, the actual connection is made by Bluetooth services. And each Bluetooth service are integrate, integrated in the protocols. So we can consider two kinds of connections. Since there is no security in SDP, it encourages insecure connection. But for other protocols, we can assume that they are secure connections. And if we think about the message over RFCOM, then because it is in the secure connection, we can say that, we can think about that, OK, it is secure. So that's the summary of our initial analysis result that, yeah, this too is secure. So it can be used for the authentication. And but these five are not secure enough. So if we have to use that features in the authentication purpose, we have to use that with additional protections. And if not, obviously there can be some attacks. And the root cause, and it's the root cause of the problems we found. And we will show with live demo. Now, Youngman will introduce a more technical details of our work, including our new attacks and mitigations. <coughs> Thank you, John, for introducing basics of proximity authentication and Bluetooth security. In this chapter, we will find a way to verify the security of Bluetooth-based proximity authentication based on what John introduced it. In the previous chapter, we looked at what is trustable and what is not trustable among the Bluetooth properties used by proximity authentication. This gives us two lessons when we want to create secure authentication. First, device authentication of a Bluetooth must only use trusted properties. Second, device proximity authentication of a Bluetooth must check both device authentication and device proximity at the same time. In other words, failing to follow either lesson one or two would result in non insecure authentication.
We have verified that Android Smart Lock and Windows Dynam Lock follow these lessons. Android Smart Lock is a feature provided Google Play service, not a USP, and Windows Dynam Lock is a feature of Windows 10. In other words, the source codes of these two features are not publicly available. So, we will verify it by analyzing state transitions. First, we will analyze the, analyze the authentication state transition of Android Smart Lock and Windows Dynamic Lock. We will check when and how to authenticate the device and check the proximity. In addition, we will analyze the connection states. As mentioned in the previous chapter, we will look at what level of connection to check for authenticating the other device. We used this methodology to reanalyze the first vulnerability in Android Smart Lock in 2015. The two states on the left represent a common Android Lock operation. Android log operation repeats the log screen and home screen according to user authentication. When the user authenticates, he enters the home screen and when the lock button is pressed or timeout, he enters the lock screen. If smart lock is activated, the states on the right are added to it. If the device in the lock screen is connected to a trusted device, it becomes a device unlocked that can enter the home screen without authentication. The Android platform used the is connected method of the Bluetooth class to do this. If the device in the home screen is also connected to a trusted device, the device enters the lock screen when the lock button is pressed, but it keeps the device unlocked. In other respects, the lock screen transits to the device unlocked by checking for is connected, while the home screen takes on explicit user interactions and causes a transit. The article in 2015 spoofs trusted device in device unlocked and transit to device unlocked. The answer to how this is possible can be obtained by analyzing the connection states. At the time, Smart Lock did not verify which protocol was actually connected when checking a connection with a trusted device. In other words, the attack was possible because the connection using the service discovery protocol, SDP, was, uh, was allowed. To fix this issue, Google added the is encrypted method to AUSP. This function checks whether the connection is encrypted. Since the connection is established using the service discovery protocol, is an insecure connection, is encrypted, is false. Smart lock called this function during the state transition, so this issue, this issue was resolved. We followed this analysis to find new vulnerabilities in Android Smart Lock and Windows Dynamic Lock. Google resolved the issue by adding additional check whether it's encrypted is true. Was this really resolved? In fact, the root cause of this issue is that the Bluetooth connection is not secure. Adding a function called MIST, adding the defense code to cover the root cause. Thus, this means that all possible scenarios should be considered. Let's look again at the state diagram of Android Smart Lock. Previously, only is connected was called during the state transition, but is encrypted is now called together. That is, 
In order for smart lock to be activated, the device in the lock screen must call is encrypted as your wedge is connected for the connection with the trusted device. What if the device in, is in the home screen? That is when the device is already unlocked. In this case, if there is a connection with a trusted device, the device must not enter the locked state. That is, in this case, is encrypted must be called. But according to our analysis, in this case, is encrypted was not called. If an attacker uses this, the device will not be locked if the user has already used the device and tries to lock the device by pressing the lock button. If you watch the demo, it will be easier to understand. This demo described the vulnerability reported in 2015 and the vulnerabilities we found. I will show you a video. The attacker in the video spoofs my card, a trusted device of the phone, and connects to the phone using the service discovery protocol. This attack is very simple. An attacker can only do this with the tools provided by BlueZ, the Bluetooth tag on the Linux platform. An attacker can use BDADDR to change his MAC address he can also perform service discovery using SDP tool. The connection established by the service discovery protocol is temporary. However, if you call it repeatedly, a persistent connection is established. The attacker only needs to learn this script. We we'll reported this attack through Google's vulnerability reward program and now our vulnerabilities are fixed by Google. This vulnerability has been forced to update via Google Play, so we cannot show live demos in here. In the same way, we analyzed Windows Dynamo Lock. The following figure is an authentication state diagram of Windows Dynamo Lock. Like Android Smart Lock, Windows Dynamo Lock verifies the connection with the trusted device to state transition. The difference with Android Smart Lock is that the trusted device must be a phone, and it measures the RSSI to check for proximity. Dynamo Lock will transit the laptop to lock state when the phone connected to the laptop in a lock state goes away. 
In other words, an attack of dynamic lock means the laptop will stay in the unlocked state even though the phone is far enough away from the laptop. Let me show you the demo first. I'm using a Windows 10 1909 released last month as Surface Go. We paired the Surface Go and my phone Pixel 3 in advance, and now these two devices are connected. Firstly, Zoom will show how Windows Dynamic Lock works. Zoom, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go outside. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 three. <laughs> if it is setting for Dynamic Lock, and the device is connected to my laptop device. Okay. Yeah. You will see the screen will be locked less than one minute while I send my laptop locks after 30 minutes. So it can improve the security while our user is away. Oh, sorry, because of full screen, it is not operated. Sorry. Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, the device is locked. Uh, <coughs> yes, then, the, uh, now I, I will show, show you our attack. We configured the deb attacker using the tools provided by BlueG. Sorry. 
to wait. <laughs> Yes, please, please, okay. <laughs> I configured the attacker using BlueZ. Uh, the tools provided by BlueZ, uh, I spoofed the uh, Back address, uh, back address of my phone, and I ran the script. Mm, yes, even after a long time, the device is now locked. My laptop spills the phone's MAC address and sets the class of device to smart watching. And then just like Android Smart Lab, I ran the script saying, saying that I'm a watch, I'm a watch, I'm a watch. Note that Windows Dynamic Lab works only when a phone is away. Note that the device does not lock while I don't touch anything. The dynamic lock does not work because Windows treats the phone as a watch. We modified the class of device to make the surface recognize phone as a smart watch. This is also easily modified using the tools provided by BlueZ. DynamLog also used the link establishment to determine the connection with the trusted device. This means that DynamLog can also be exploited using the service discovery protocol. In addition, it is vulnerable to passive attacks. The attacker just needs to set his device as connectable. The laptop then connects itself with the attacker. Dynamic lock checks the RSSI in addition to the connection, but this value is also an untrusted property, so it can be easily manipulated by attackers. We reported to Microsoft about these issues. Microsoft defines dynamic lock is a convenient feature, not a security feature. Even if even if the dynamic lock is broken, the laptop is locked by the timeout system provided by Windows. This means that Windows dynamic lock still has all of the vulnerabilities mentioned, so users and developers using dynamic lock should be aware that this feature is a convenience feature, not a security feature. <laughs> Earlier morning today, Microsoft sent an email about follow-up. The dynamic lock documentation will be intended to be modified so that users know that they should use dynamic lock with caution. We have listed the problems with Bluetooth-based proximity authentication. So how do we create service secure authentication without these issues? First of all, we must understand Bluetooth security correctly and analyze our implementation based on it. We need to analyze and verify what Bluetooth properties we use and whether they are really secure. Second, we must identify our insecure paths and apply a fix to our paths. Google was aware of the cause of the vulnerability, but it did not apply the fix to our sections. 
More fundamentally, the analysis should be applied to the software development life cycle. Analysis of state transition should verify that authentication is not triggered by untrusted properties. For this pro process, we developed the vulnerability develop detection tool. Our tool guides you through the method for verifying Bluetooth-based proximity authentication. Security can be verified by the guideline provided by our tool. If you are forced to use insecure properties such as RSSI, you can also bind them with secure components. Now, Chun will wrap up the presentation today. Yeah. Thank you, man. Mm. So, what about our new findings? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so, our new finding means that our convenient, very, 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 very convenient Bluetooth-based proximity authentication method could result in insecurity because they do not properly utilize the Bluetooth security. So, we propose the method to analyze the security following the Bluetooth security 101 and found several new vulnerabilities, Android and Windows. And we think that the root cause of these attacks is because the Windows smart lock Android smart lock and Windows Dynamic does not utilize the, does not use the Bluetooth features properly. So if they use that after our analysis, using our analysis result, then it can be secured. So the lesson we have is just back to basic. Never trust anything before verification. The problem of Android Smart Lab was very well known, but it is not still don't fix. So it's a very curious one. And so please check everything before using it. Another one is to apply the proposed state-based analysis in when you design a proximity-based authentication. Today, for the Android Smart Lab, we only introduced one attack cases, but there are several other use cases because our new attack case have come from our new state diagrams. But if we know more and more about um, Android Smart Lab, then actually we can find out some new state and also we can find on new vulnerabilities. We also already reported that to Google and it was already fixed. But actually because we are not a uh, Developer of Android Smart Lab, we don't know how many states, how many hidden states are there. So every developer should apply this state diagram, this state analysis too, when they develop a new software. And so and after making a state diagram, you should not authorize access if the connection is untrusted. So please check that. The tool is open sourced. So you can try our vulnerability detection tool as you wish. Here, just kidding. Here, the number zero to 10,000 means in Korean, zero means young, and 1,000 means man. It's the name of him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, my question is an easy one. Do you have a, a paper on this? Excuse have you, me? Have you written paper, a paper, paper about this um, vulnerability? Oh, yeah. The white paper will be opened in the, and will be published in the Black Hat website. Oh, okay. Yeah. This will be published on Black Hat. Yeah, yeah, okay. None yet, it will be.
Hi, I wanted to understand mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. this work fits into the rest of the work that you do as a day job and what your plans were for going beyond this research. Oh. Yeah, actually, yeah. Let me uh, say, actually, one, one reason why we do this research is because we are now developing a new proximity-based authentication. So we have, to, we have to analyze the known solution so we can find that. So our future goal is to provide a more better proximity-based, pro, better proximity authentications. You will see, I hope, next year. No questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening.